Good morning, folks. Sunspot number is rising, solar wind shifting, eruptive tendencies persist, and we've got the top science news from the journals. We are starting with our star where we see the bright active regions, the central dark coronal hole, and small filament snaps continuing on the south. There has not been significant flaring from the sunspots, but we do have amplification of the solar wind. Second panel from the top, blue, the phi angle, magnetic field of the solar wind flipped last night as the heliospheric current sheet swept past Earth. It's the smaller, scaled-down solar system version of what we've been discussing with the galactic current sheet. You can see below that the telemetry changed, especially the plasma speed in purple, and geomagnetic activity is slightly enhanced as well. Those sector boundaries often precede strong coronal hole streams, in this case coming from that central coronal hole, expected to arrive tomorrow. Taking a look at the sunspots, we do have several, some of fairly good size, but not a lot of complexity to the active regions, which is why they're not producing many flares. They change by the hour and there's more incoming, so we will have to continue to have eyes on them. And we're on to the papers. Excellent one here, continuing Scafetta's years of proving the planetary positions affect the sun. This works on 11-year timescales and shorter ones for the upticks. Mechanistic analysis here rather than statistical. By the way, the only significant planetary alignment this month is on August 14th. Sun, Earth, and Saturn. An excellent nod to the global electric circuit component to volcanoes here. The process of confirming volcanic eruptions at remote locations is still challenging, but may become easier if they can use the numerous electromagnetic aspects of the events and the atmosphere as an automatic detection system, sort of like how they do with infrasound for meteorites and nukes, etc. Moving on to the climate, the errors in climate models is something I could talk about all day. In fact, I have. But here, it's specifically the projections of future warming and the large and varying errors to different models and input parameters is a giant red flag that they are missing critical pieces of the puzzle, like the sun, and putting too much weight on others, like carbon. And speaking of errors in the models, this one being corrected here. It's not the first time we've seen it for phytoplankton, once thought to be one of the first species doomed by climate change, not only thriving like chlorophyll and krill, but expected to continue thriving. Indeed, a tiny chemical change isn't going to take them out when it's accompanied by a doubling of their primary food source. This paper gets an A-plus for the topical coverage, but a B-minus for the analysis. Indeed, hopefully we recall the solar storm that took out several SpaceX satellites earlier this year. Not a bad identification of the sources of that space weather event, except qualitatively. They describe a one-two punch where the two was unexpected, uh, except by anyone who watches the sun. Every observer knew there were two small CMEs on the way. But also regarding the small size and the magnitude of their effects on Earth way more than would be expected unless Earth's magnetic field was struggling, allowing these small solar eruptions to do more to the planet. Same with Astra's failed rocket launch during another solar storm around that same time. Last but not least, folks, this is where scientists get great opportunities to realize something's wrong and they almost never take them. The magnetic field power on the sun is vastly higher than expected, vastly higher than previous studies have shown. The issue is that it's not like they made mistakes to such magnitude in the past, but the sun is changing. When we reported the helium chemistry change, it was the same story, and that one came with the identification that coronal magnetic fields were beginning to change. Folks, they don't need to reconcile past readings and ask what they did wrong. Both the old readings and the new ones with the changing sun are correct. Literally everything I just discussed is in the Observer Supplement, one of six books available at the links below, three textbook format, three children's books, plus a lot more. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.